Command Chief, 67th Cyberspace Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Robert Hopkins. The Commander, 318th Cyberspace Operations Group, Colonel James Hewitt. The Deputy Director, uh, pardon, uh, the Superintendent, 318th Cyberspace Operations Group, Chief Jeffrey Law. The spouse of the outgoing commander, Captain Melissa Everidge. The spouse of the incoming commander, Ms. Mrs. Toby Sonia. To the other senior leaders, members of the 67th Cyberspace Wing staff, 318th Cyberspace Operations Group staff, distinguished guests, friends, and the Everidge and Sony family, thank you for taking the time to share this special occasion with us today. Welcome, one and all. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander, 39th Information's Operations Squadron, Colonel Joseph J. Wingo. Hey, I'm hoping that um, everybody can hear me. I, the, I think what you're seeing is my big giant head floating above the stage, <laughs> like the uh, like the great and powerful Oz or something. Uh, because of where the, my camera is placed, all I can really see is like the ankles of Q and Solo over there kind of the bottoms of the chair. So I'm gonna be talking, talking to the audience a little bit differently. So don't think that I can see you while you're seeing me, it'll, it'll look a little bit different. But uh, anyway, to begin with, I'd really like to just uh, thank everybody for, for being here. Uh, Colonel Cunningham, I, I assume you're there. I think I heard you laughing a little bit in the background as I was speaking. So yeah, I see, I see a few thumbs up. Uh, I think I heard that Colonel Whitaker is there, Colonel Hewitt, uh, Imagine Chief Hopkins, Chief Law. Thank you all for being there. Anybody that I missed, any other of our distinguished guests, uh, you know, thank you for being here with us today. We know you have busy, busy calendars, uh, and uh, your time is precious, especially with everything we have going on. Uh, Melissa, thank you for being here. Thank you for all the support you provided to uh, Q. We know you have your own career that you've been busy with as well, working all the way over at Randolph and uh, having to make that drive back and forth, but thank you for everything that you've done to support him. Uh, Toby, thank you for being here, supporting Solo. Uh, I'll say more, a little bit more about this in a minute, but uh, the support that you give him is going to be critical to helping him be able to take care of our airmen. We have a lot of friends and family and fellow airmen that are joining us virtually and uh, watching over the live stream, so again, I'd like to welcome all of you to this occasion as we we celebrate this uh, change of command as we celebrate what uh, Q has done and what the solo is going to do here at the Navy Captain. I'd also like to take the time to welcome all the men and women of the 39th IOS Attachment 1. You really are the people that this ceremony is about. Uh, as a commander will lead and oftentimes represent or be the face of the detachment, you are the detachment. You are the ones that execute the mission every day to defend our nation. So welcome to, to all of you. I first met Q when he came on board as a detachment commander last year. I hadn't, I hadn't really met him before, uh, but I'd heard nothing but great things about him from, from folks like Colonel Atkins and Colonel Whitaker, folks who worked with him on Cybercom. Uh, and he has done a great job of living up to the hype. Um, so I, I knew with him coming on board that we were going to get somebody strong, we were going to get somebody capable, and we were going to get somebody who was excited to come in and execute the mission. When he arrived, I told him that I didn't need a detachment commander who was just a glorified flight commander. A lot of folks who've never done detachment command don't necessarily understand kind of what that's like, uh, being a commander subordinate to a squadron commander and working to execute that squadron commander's mission. Um, I have been told, I, I was a detachment commander at one point in time, and um, uh, I, remember, I, I remember being disheartened uh, when my first boss told me that uh, he really viewed detachment commanders as glorified flight commanders. I had sought to prove him wrong throughout my time as a detachment commander, um, but I swore to God that if I was ever a squadron commander supporting detachment commanders, that I would always respect them as commanders and, and use them as commanders. Uh, and so that's what I told you I needed. I needed a detachment commander who wasn't a glorified flight commander, but was a partner commander to help me continue to push his mission forward. And that's exactly what he did. I, I won't list you all his accomplishments. Uh, he's got a lot of them. Uh, although his command was cut, is, I'll say cut short by a year, he's, he's leaving for school as an opportunity. Um, 
but uh, even after a, a one-year command, he's got a lot of accomplishments under his belt here as the detachment commander. Uh, you'll hear some of those as we do the decoration. Uh, but as a quick summary, some of the key highlights. Under his leadership, over the last year, Q's converted the detachment from being really just an extension of the squadron and what the squadron teaches uh, into its own independent offensive cyber operations formal training unit. Around the time he got here, we made the strategic decision to split the squadron in by what we trained. And so we shifted defensive operations training to Hurlburt, and we worked to shift all of the offensive operations training to, uh, to the location there at, uh, at the detachment. And I asked him to stand it up as the OCO formal training unit, and he took on that mission uh, spectacularly. Uh, additionally, he took on the mission of integrating the 390th COS OLA. So what we all know is uh, the, the OL that was, that was working to provide uh, riot training, and I'll talk a little bit more about this in a minute, but uh, basically incorporating that capability, that organization into the detachment and, and bringing in that organization, the huge challenge of bringing in that organization so it wasn't just the detachment's OL, we didn't want a separate entity from the detachment, but to actually fully integrate that, that capability and that mission into the detachment so that it was one unit and one organization. I think he did a fantastic job of that. In the midst of all of this change, he also had the opportunity to lead the detachment through the continued operations, through continued operations during uh, this COVID-19 outbreak, uh, which has uh, been interesting. I've talked to a couple of people and I was, I was sharing with you this morning as we were talking, as I look back on, uh, on my time in command here going through the, this COVID outbreak, I don't have a whole lot of other things to compare it to in terms of leadership challenges. I think one of the closest things I've compared it to uh, in terms of leadership challenges was um, leading in a combat environment in Baghdad, um, just with that constant threat to, to people's well-being to their security and with the constant changes in operational issues and security issues. Um, that's, and it's, it's not even really the same as that uh, because now we have the health of our families involved too. So it's just this whole new strange leadership opportunity. Um, and, you know, we were both kind of talking about it and, and in a way, you know, it's, it's, it's not good that it's happened. Um, but, you know, he shared with me as well that he's very thankful to have had the opportunity to let to lead in this environment uh, and just and be able to be part of it and, and take away those leadership lessons. And I think you've done a great job of that. Numbers, unit, comp unit accomplishments, no PRs aren't really what makes a great commander, right? And this kind of goes back to the, some of the things I'm talking about in terms of leading uh, in this environment, but it's, it's all those day-to-day -day intangibles that, that never really make it into a bullet statement on an OPR. It's championing, uh, tempo issues when when your folks work tempo is is too high. Uh, it's trying to find solutions and working those solutions and implementing them. It's re reclaiming quality of life for your folks. It's about all that time spent mentoring your airmen and listening to their personal and professional challenges, working their quality of life concerns. It's about being there during the bad news and to to uh, to cheer along with people during the good news. It's about setting high standards for your folks and motivating them to reach them, mentoring your people to be better than they thought they could be. It's about fighting to get your airmen's accomplishments recognized and trying to provide calm and inspiration to your folks during times when uh, sheltering at home was what a lot of other folks around the country, most everybody else around the country was doing, but your team is still needed to come into work and accept risks to accomplish the mission and to help provide a sense of calm and inspiration for those folks as they're working in that environment. You've done all of these things like the commander should. So thank you for not just being the guy in charge, but thank you for being a true commander and a fellow commander with me to help lead this organization. I'm sure absolutely positive that there is a squadron command with your name on it, uh, probably right back here in this way. Uh, and, and I look forward to seeing you there. Our entire squad, the 39th, all of the Knights, uh, wish you well. Uh, they wish you and Melissa the best of luck as you guys head off uh, to school with the Army in Kansas. Uh, this is a, a great opportunity, and uh, we're all positive that you're going to do great things.
All right, to uh, make the Solomon solo Sonia, the only face that I can actually see uh, from my perspective here. <laughs> so, Solo is the perfect person to take over Detachment 1 and lead it to becoming its, its own squadron. So before Solo, uh, so Solo came from right here in the detachment, right? Uh, basically fleeting up to be the commander. But before he was part of the detachment, he was the guy that stood up the 390th OLA. The, the origins for what a lot of what we're considering or, or incorporating me in as the OCOFTU. He was responsible for getting students to right training. I can tell you when I when I used to work at, at HAP as the as the career field manager, uh, the guys from the 67 COG. Uh, I remember when Chris Rubiano first approached me about this this OL and standing up this pass code uh, for these riot grads, and he said, "Joe, it's just going to be a holding pen for students." Um, you know, that's kind of the thought process. That's what we thought it was going to be back then. This was just going to be a place where students came and sat while they were doing right. And it, that was really all it was. And so, you know, I don't know what Solo thought in his head when he was told he was going to be put in charge of this. Um, but I know that he did. I know that when he came into the organization, he didn't just see himself as the quote-unquote babysitter of a bunch of students that are sitting in a holding pen while they go through riot. He gave himself the mission and admirably took it on as the guy who was going to make life better for those students and improve their success as students in getting through that pipeline. So he set out to see what he could do to maximize, maximize our pathways through riot. This is a course where other services experience a 30 to 60% pass rate. I think if you're in the Marine Corps, it's probably a 0% pass rate still. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, someone's nodding his head to me. Yes, yeah, so I can think that's what it is, right? And so the Air Force before his time was also struggling uh, with our pass rates through Ryan. Uh, since he's come in and put his program in place, uh, we've, we've seen this course grow to where we have a, an Air Force pass rate that's well up over 8%. And I believe we've seen an ops pass rate that is hit. Uh, it's a huge challenge. It's a extremely complex work, and it's uh, worked with a with a with a partner organization that doesn't make it any easier. And so, uh, it, what he's been able to do has been remarkable. The Air Force sits with the highest pass rates of any other service in the DoD, and other services look to us for how to do it. In fact, I have had the guys in the Marine Corps that run Marine Corps training come to my office at Hoover and ask me how you guys do this, and I've walked him through the things that Solo has put together. He's done everything by establishing methodologies for making sure that we recruit the best students into the program. He's built mentor programs for those students. He's found and utilized supplemental. Every individual student and their progress to see what they need for supplemental training to make sure that they get exactly what they need so that they'll be able to to make it through the program successfully and excel. Also, if you know Solo, he has an academic and operational background. I think that it primed him spectacularly uh, to, to command this socio-formal training unit. Over the last couple of years, he's become fully and personally invested in the success of offensive operations training and I think he knows it more intimately than anybody else does. So with this experience and background, he is the perfect selection to continue in this training schoolhouse and to continue to command attachment one. Toby, I'd like to thank you in advance for everything that you're gonna to do to support Solo. I know you've already been dealing with him constantly on the road, traveling back and forth to, uh, to, to Mead and to Keesler and all these places. Um, Hopefully he's going to delegate some of that to some other people as he's taking command now of the larger uh, of the larger squadron. I'm kind of I'm kind of foot stomping that for you there, Solo. So, uh, and, and you can hold him account for that, Toby. If, if he's if he's spending too much time on the road uh, out, as soon as COVID's up and we can travel again, if he's spending too much time on the road, you say, "Hey, Colonel Wingo said you were supposed to be hanging around here a little bit more." But 
you know, we'll, we'll see how long that, how that, how that works for you. But, uh, but thank you for everything that you're going to do to support him, uh, support him in taking care of our airmen and, and being part of this team, uh, being part of the Blue Knights there in Detachment 1. So uh, thank you for all that you're going to do. Thank you to both of you. Uh, as we continue, the 39th, as we continue in our mission to build airmen and strike fear at the hearts of our nation's adversaries, uh, which is what we do every day. Again, thank you everybody for being here. And with that, I will uh, go ahead and turn it over, back over to the, uh, to, uh, the narrator. Publish the order. This is to certify that the President of the United States of America, authorized by executive service medical cluster to Major General 10 July 2019 to 5 June 2020. Major John Q. Everidge distinguished himself in the performance of outstanding service to the United States as Commander, Detachment 1, 39th Information Operations Squadron, 318th Cyberspace Operations Group, 67th Cyberspace Wing, Joint Base San Antonio Lackland, Texas. In this critical capacity, Major Everidge displayed exceptional transformational leadership, posturing the detachment's restructure from a defensive to an offensive cyberspace operations formal training unit to meet the cyber mission force's readiness needs. During this period, leading the way for the detachment's growth to a squadron within the Information Warfare Training Group, he seamlessly integrated 93 airmen into the unit, directed the creation of the Air Force's first offensive cyber force, and organized three major command training planning teams Combating the readiness impact of mission partner provided training, Major Everidge's initiatives postured the Air Force for long-term combat power generation by the development of service-retained training pipelines. Additionally, he led his team into the creation of the first joint graduate level capability development initial qualification training, equipping our nation's combat coders for the next fight. Finally, operating through the coronavirus pandemic, under Major Everidge's leadership, his team abated all mission essential course stoppages, guaranteeing future readiness while safeguarding 151 airmen, ensuring no one was infected. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of Major Everidge reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. Gentlemen, the Commander, Detachment 1, 39th Information Operations Squadron, Major John Q. Everett. So I got some cars to here to help keep me on track. As I was getting ready for this over the week, over this past week, Melissa gave me two bits of advice. The first was uh, to pray as I was preparing, make sure I, I spend time with God and, and kind of think through what I'm going to deliver as we charge this unit to go do great things. And the next one was not to be too long, not to go too long. So I don't, I don't know if you know, but spouses only maintain 50% of what their better half says. And uh, unfortunately for you, I pray. <laughs> In all seriousness, I listened to 100% of what she said, and, and it's, it's not gonna be too long. But I would be remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to thank the outstanding airmen I've had the opportunity to serve with. Uh, before I forget, uh, I, have a, I have a PTSD that I'll forget to thank the person who put this together, Lieutenant Celiano, Celiano and Mr. Hoskins. Thank you for doing this. This means the world's both solo and my family. Thank you for doing that. Matt Sergeant Dickerson, thank you for narrating. You just stood right up. You didn't have to solicit volunteers. You're like, I'm going to do this. So thank you so much for doing this for us. Lieutenant Ross, the, uh, it, when we do these in the military, you notice we didn't clap after the national anthem. We have a protocol we follow. But uh, if I could have clapped, I would have clapped. It then did a second clap. So thank you for, for that national anthem uh, performance. And uh, Pastor Graham, thank you. Uh, your words meant, to work, meant, the word, meant the world to um, Melissa and I. It gave me comfort that you knew that we had an awesome dude that's taken, taken my spot. And thank you for doing that for, for our families. And Mr. Tiernan, sir, uh, he's our PA, our public affairs officer. And during this, during this pandemic, he's had to find creative ways to allow us to communicate with our units and with our families. So the reason you're able to see us is because of the hard work he's put in. Thank you so much. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a little atypical. I'm going to breeze through the leadership team. Leadership team, thank you for being here. I'll talk about you a little bit later on. 
Thank you for the airmen we have here in the audience. And thank you for our friends and family that are out on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for dedicating time to do this. Uh, I know you have other things you can be doing, um, but to, you're doing this for Major Sonia and I. We're, we're very grateful for that. So a moment ago, you heard a declaration of all of the things that I, and I'm going to do air quotes in case someone is listening. I'm going to say air quotes in case someone is listening and not watching. I did. Um, as a commander, you don't actually get the opportunity to get your hands dirty very often. And, uh, and most of the time, you're, you're just you're giving guidance and you're giving encouragement and, uh, and, and uh, just providing resources. That's what you get paid to do, guidance, resources, and encouragement. And if you work with me, my encouragement usually works this way. You'll come in with a solution, because we always have solutions. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, listen to too many problems, because I have some really smart airmen. I know they're, they can come up with solutions. They come in with a solution, and my reply to their challenge and how they're gonna do, how they're gonna achieve uh, and get around that challenge would be uh, seems pretty easy. Uh, go ahead and knock it out. It's not gonna be that hard. Um, and then I'll send them on their way to solve it. Here, here's my trick. I knew it was really hard when I told them it was easy. I knew it every single time. It was darn darn near impossible. But I knew they can do it, and I knew they can do it because of the culture they drove in our unit. They drove a culture of integrity first. It's a core value, but it was our value. But we, we put a different spin on that. We told ourselves we were going to be honest with ourselves and honest with one another in form of accountability and in form of pushing ourselves to be the best we can be. We believed in mutual respect. Those were our two core tenets, mutual respect. Regardless of what made us different, we realized that our diversity bred success. And we, we fostered that. We wanted to have a loving and inviting environment. And that was important to us. And if we'd seen anything that would go against that, I didn't have to say anything. They knew that I would, but they would squash it before I ever heard it. And I heard them through the background, and they handled it because they were a family, and they were not gonna let anyone stop that family. And that success that they got because of the integrity and mutual respect led to, to, uh, uh, to excellence. So you heard of 151 people in the unit. We do have 151. Uh, I'm gonna use a, a, a little uh, language that is probably not nice. A uh, hundred of those are customers, probably 120. They're customers and they're, they're blood sucking leeches, I'm joking. But <laughs> they require service. They, they don't help to do that. So I have a small cadre that gets the mission done, right? Uh, so that means when you have 30, 40 people taking care of 100 people, that's a lot of work. And they drove, they got together and, uh, and through excellence, they made, they, they made sure we took care of those requirements. And here's, here's another thing. We believed in ownership in our unit. So we talk about hot potatoes. And we don't pass hot potatoes. We don't pass, we don't pass the hot potatoes. What we do is we, we cut it open, we put a little butter in it, some sour cream and chives, and we ate that challenge. And we believed that. We were solution-oriented, and we believed that. And then the last thing, we believed that leadership and servitude are equal. Uh, I, would, I would often call myself a lead servant. You're going to take my role as a lead servant. And my job was to give them what they needed. And they, in turn, served each other. So because of that, like I said, you heard some things that I did. There, these are the things they did. They did. And they weren't easy. But every airman military, civilian, and contractor gave their all to what we had to do in order to strike fear in the hearts of our adversaries. So I want to take, it, take the time, and for the people who are in here, if you will join me in virtual world, give them a round of applause and, and thank them. Again. All right, so uh, that leaves me like, all right, so um, they're doing all the work, and I'm the commander, and you figure I do command by myself. I didn't. I had a command team. So I had two superintendents, I had the pleasure of working with two superintendents who would make sure I kept my eye on the airmen and took care of them. CMS, CMS Sergeant Mick Merritt and CMS, CMS Sergeant Anthony Hoxie. They both were the most transparent and engaged leaders and had a deep affinity for their airmen. And, and any time I needed them, they would be there and they would be there before I needed them. They were, they were leading me uh, left and right and it's been my pleasure to serve with you. We have a first sergeant. We don't have a permanent first sergeant. We share the first sergeant with five or six other units. But you would never know that Sergeant Babel, we want her number one priority. Because she's such engaged, she was such an engaged leader and such an amazing first sergeant. And truth be told, we know the detachment was our favorite unit. She may have told me once or twice. <laughs> uh, and then my flight leadership. So uh, I have some amazing officers and NCOs. And NCOs who step up into the CNCO grade to take care of the things a couple levels over because we have the team we have and we fight the fight that we have in front of us. So um, amazing senior CEOs and amazing airmen uh, and officers to help us do that. 
And uh, lastly, uh, as far as the, the command team, my key spouses. So I had uh, Deborah Main, and I had uh, Miss Larry Moore and Miss Elizabeth Wilson. They made sure we connected the families with the mission, and we all stayed one unit. So I, I didn't even do my command by myself. I was just surrounded by a bunch of amazing airmen and, and, and uh, family members who made sure we stayed as a family and achieved this mission. And I'm so grateful for them. So my boss, uh, the big head that you saw a moment ago, is uh, Colonel Wingo. Colonel Wingo, as he mentioned, led me as a squadron commander. You couldn't tell me I wasn't going in my own unit, except here's the difference. Uh, command comes with responsibilities because I was an attachment can commander. I had a little less money responsibilities, so he gave, I got to sign checks that he had to cash all the time. And he <laughs> cashed every last one of them. So uh, definitely uh, supported me in that, that measure, mentored me, grew me. Hey, sir, thank you. I, I know you can't see anything but my feet, but uh, thank you for um, mentoring me and providing your team to help us make sure we were all one unit. And thank you for this opportunity and for being part of this process that selected me to be here. Colonel Hewitt, Chief Gall, and, and uh, Mr. Hurd's not here. Uh, you guys, um, you all were our, our group commander, our higher headquarters, and, and all that goodness, but you felt like a bunch of big brothers, and I say that with all due respect. You allowed me to come in, and I can be upset, I can have a half thought out idea. You will let me go through it, and you'll do one of two things. You will help me get the tool to solve the problem, or you'll solve it for me, because you're like, oh, that's probably my job. But you, you put your arms around me, and sir, and Chief, thank you so much. And it's been a pleasure serving with you and serving for you. Uh, thanks for this opportunity. Colonel Cunningham, ma'am, uh, you are uh, the most amazing peak coordinate leader. You have personally stepped into Melissa and my life to make sure that we're going to be as close as we can be this next year. And you, and you don't do that just for Q because Q's doing a mission for you. You do that for every single airman. You remind me of my father. You're the, you're the type of person that pumps you up and makes you feel like you can run through a wall. And you got these two, Colonel Whitaker and Chief Hopkins, to be like my mom. My mom is the reason I can actually run through that wall because they'll punch you in the chest and make you stand up strong and be able to do those things. So, thank you for that. Oh, <laughs> my, mother was, my mother was the reason that uh, uh, we did this, right? Hey, uh, we're all about equality, right? We feel the roles we need to fill. All right, so uh, now it's time for me to step out of the way. Um, but, as I was getting ready for this, and I was thinking through just different uh, leaders and, and, and such that and came to mind, I thought of John the Baptist, and I'm not trying to make you Jesus. I didn't, I didn't. But, <laughs> but I, had, I had a purpose, right? My purpose was, I knew what my purpose was. And when, I was, when it was over, it was clear. And you, and you, and you are the man for the job. Uh, Major Sonia is a unicorn. Uh, he is a world-class cyber SME, our subject matter expert. World class is not tongue in cheek. Uh, we worked together for the last six months. My first request that I had to fulfill as, as Major Sonia's commander was a request for him to go to Nor Norway to teach them cybersecurity. So he is literally world renowned. And I had to recruit three others to three other countries. So um, that's, not, that's not a play. So it is very easy to step out of the way knowing that we have you coming. And I'm so proud of you, man. You know I'm here for you no matter what. Um, uh, just I'm a phone call away. And, uh, um, and if you need me to come down here and throw a chop a couple people. <laughs> and uh, so, and last, so my, my personal thank yous. My personal thank yous. Um, I like to thank my mother, my father, God rest his soul, my mother and father in love, uh, my aunts, uncles, brothers, cousins, friends, and family. Uh, I can list you all out, but for the sake of speed, I, I will not. But you all at integral point, points during this tour were there for me, providing me mentorship or just a pat on the back. And I love you. And I thank you so much for that. I pray that I was able to carry on the love that you gave to me, to the team. Thank you so much. And my beautiful bride. So there's a joke that I married up, but I literally married all the way up. Uh, I'm, married to, <laughs> I'm lucky. I'm a blessed dude. Uh, and, um, Melissa has an amazing uh, military career that she's she's pursuing, and we've had three three moves as many as in as many years. So. We've been humping, and I actually got to follow her for a couple tours, and that's how I ended up here, and, and God paid the footsteps, so it was a really good opportunity, and, and she's gonna follow me this tour, but we're together. Um, you, have, you have supported me, you have been my rock. Uh, on my most frustrating days, you were there to tell me it was gonna it'll be okay, and, on, um, and, uh, and you were there for the unit, and you were, the, and you were there for us in the team. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so happy I get to live life with you. And lastly, uh, I would be remiss if I, 
didn't thank my Lord and Savior. Because of him, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because of him, Melissa and I are able to do definitely more than we would have ever thought or imagined. And we have. Um, I don't I don't think I would have picked and thought this tour would have been the way it is, but it has been, and I'm so appreciative. So Blue Knights, one last thing. Blue Knight one, out. At this time, one officer and one enlisted member of Detachment 1, 39th Information Operations Squadron will render their final salute to their outgoing commander, Major John Q. Everett, as he prepares to relinquish command. These members represent the entire det detachment, many of whom are watching the ceremony remotely. Present. Ladies and gentlemen, the men and women of Detachment 1 39th Information Operations Squadron would like to present a gift to Major Everidge's wife, Captain Melissa Everidge, for her outstanding support throughout the duration of Major Everidge's command. Her tireless dedication has significantly improved the detachment, and we would like to present a small token of our appreciation. The ceremony you are about to witness is one of the briefest yet most significant of our military customs. All authority and responsibility are vested in the hands of the commander in an unbroken chain to the commander-in-chief, President Trump. No unit may ever, even for a brief moment, be without a commander. So today, when Major Everett relinquishes command and Major Sonia assumes command, all authority and responsibility for Detachment 1, 39th Information Operations Squadron transfers to him immediately. This ceremony culminates a series of significant achievements under Major Everidge's leadership, vision, and guidance, and reflects great confidence in the continuance of those achievements under the command of Major Sonia. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the change of command of Detachment 1, 39th Information Operations Squadron. Publish the order. Attention to orders. Special order number GI-2003, dated 5th of June, 2020. Major John Q. Everidge is relieved of command of Detachment 1, 39th Information Operations Squadron, and Major Solomon Y. Sonia assumes command, effective the 5th of June, 2020, by order of Colonel James Hewitt, Commander, 318th Cyberspace Operations Group. Host. Sir, I relinquish command. Sir, I assume command. Post. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> to introduce to you for the first time the commander, Detachment 1, 39th Information Operations Squadron, Major Solomon Y. Sonia. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so that was a great speech. Like that was amazing. Uh, everything you said it just makes me blush. And imagine it's hard for me to blush. <laughs> it, it was nice. Yeah. It's, it's nice. It's, it's an amazing day. Um, definitely, I want to thank you. Um, thank you, Dominic, uh, Lieutenant Ross. Um, thank you all for the time, um, DK, for coming in and putting this all together for us. Terrence, thanks, and even for your battle scars. Um, it's awesome. Thanks for your help. You and I know. <laughs> Everyone else, you know, I, I just thank you. Um, thank you very much, Colonel Canola, even being there. Camouflage, I, I very recognize you. Um, thank you. Um, thank, thank you all very much. Um, it's, it's hard even to think about, like, where to begin, because my speech is supposed to be short. And, you know, it's just for thanks. I mean, if I have time to thank everybody to get to this point, we will still be here from today until tomorrow. Um, but just a few people that I'm able to thank, you know, I'll just go through that list real quick and, and just thank you. Um, I, I even think back from, like, where do you start thanking an individual? Um, I had an old chief, um, Chief Barrett, an old Chief Nash, uh, and a Major Gunter from Junior ROTC um, to actually help me get to this point. Like, they set up 
the love and the joy for the Air Force for me. And that's really what got me onto um, the right path. And then uh, there was a, a course I went to in 2007. I was actually in 2006, 2007, um, when I was invited to my cadre's office in ROTC in college. And he said, congratulations, you've been selected to apply to this uh, cybersecurity program. And first I'm saying, how do you get selected to apply to something? Either you apply or you're selected to go. But you're selected to apply to this thing. And no one had any idea of what it was. Uh, it was called the Advanced Course in Engineering Cyberspace Security uh, under the leadership of uh, Dr. Kamal Jabor, Colonel Wieners, um, uh, Dr. Sarah Muccio, Dr. Devendorf. And that actually uh, introduced the, the uh, I, I'll say, the, it got me onto the dark side. Um, so that's really what made me the cyber officer. Um, they had three main um, quotes, three main sayings of that program, no exceptions, no extensions, no excuses. And so that's actually what, you, what I embodied you know, to help me get onto this path and to help me get here. And so to all of our ACE staff and, and everyone I can't mention, it's, it's an ACE family, um, I just thank you all. Um, thank you all very much for helping um, to get here. Then when I finally got onto uh, active duty, um, there were two lieutenants um, that I worked with at the time, uh, Lieutenant Dan Gunter and, and Lieutenant John Guptill, um, that we worked hard together, tirelessly, um, uh, just doing various projects uh, because we went to the ACE program together. And so I just remember um, Lieutenant Dan is actually the one, uh, Lieutenant Dan, um, <laughs> uh, he was the one that we did our first, our, our first project together. And he's like, you know, this is good. We can actually speak at a conference. I'm like, speak at a conference? Wow, those guys are like, oh, I don't know. Um, but, you know, we, we tried and we worked hard, we worked together, and, and that introduced me onto this path of, you know, programming, whatever it is, whatever idea, you just have, you, you like, okay, uh, that sounds doable, you go off, I'm away for a month, I come back, a new program is created. You know, it, it was nice being able to grow with the right officers uh, to help me onto the right path. Then I moved over to AFIT, um, having Dr. Mullins as my advisor, and then Dr. Badiru, um, what, what great, incredible gentlemen. Um, to learn from and to help make your way through uh, graduate, uh, graduate school to um, finally come over to uh, working at the Air Force Academy. Now, the Air Force Academy. That, I, I look forward to commands. I love the, our, our detachment. I love everything we've done. Uh, the Academy is just something unique that I love that experience. Uh, working with Colonel uh, Caswell, Dr. Hatfield, Dr. Brown, Dr. Carlisle, uh, my advisor, Colonel Sparkman, uh, along with even um, our assistant, Sean Harris. Uh, we had a few um, other individuals and, and just great colleagues that I'm not able to mention everybody. Um, but it was a great experience and, and we, we could not join, you know, we can't be here uh, due to the COVID separation. Um, but thank you all so much for, for helping me and, and being inspirations in my path. Uh, then from the academy, I move over to the 390th. Um, finally coming over to Texas, back to Texas, and even at the time from academia, I had no idea what the 390th did. Um, I, I did not know, because it was a, a newer squadron a number at the time, so I don't, you know, you, we come over, uh, and now we, we get to do some more uh, really awesome cyber things, and, and that was great. Uh, working with Colonel Mahan um, and Colonel Tyler, like, they, they had the initial vision of, um, let, let's just gather everyone together, go do riot. But Colonel Mahan um, had the, the, the vision to even keep me in the squadron and saying, okay, I, I like what you've done here from your background. I think you're going to be the right one to lead this. Like, let's figure out what to do together. Um, so they were great um, just working and seeing, okay, how do we establish this? Then with Colonel Canode and Chief Small, like so many times we'd have so many discussions and huh, I invested my life um, in, into the students because it meant a lot. And it, it meant more to the candidates because when we would go to uh, Maryland and people would introduce themselves going through the program, I'm like, I love interacting and talking to people. So some people would say, hey, there at so-and-so, they did not make it through Riot. I'm like, what a shame that someone has this associated with their name. You know, this program is more than a training. It's about the airmen. It's about the people. And so uh, I, I think in life, there's, there's a point when you wake up and realize, like, this is my purpose. And I really believe uh, working with our candidates coming here, um, working with our students, has been my purpose. Like this is what you know the Lord led me to this point, and and just thank you for that opportunity. And then Colonel Cunningham, like thank you for allowing us and just saying like, what's the way forward? Like you heard our thoughts, you heard us. He said, all right, what can I do to help you? And you uh, allowed us on that right path. It means a lot. Like it it really means a lot. And I I, I thank you all so much for that um, time and opportunity.
Then when we move over from uh, the 390th with Colonel DeLong, Chief Hoxie, we now come into the 39th. Thanks for allowing us to come into your home. Like, it, it was great. It was not my house, it was your house, you know? So uh, thank you for and, and making us all a family. Like, that, that meant a lot. Um, with Colonel Hewitt, uh, Chief Goloff, thank you um, for bringing us over and working with us. Because um, you allowed us to see, like, what's, what's the vision? It was never, thou shalt. Instead it was, okay, what do you think? We would um, express our thoughts out loud. We'd say, that makes sense, let's go and do. Consider these things, we would do that, and that's going to be successful. And that, that's really what, what helped us. So thank you. Um, thank you for being there. I, again, thank you so much for allowing me, because uh, I'm, I'm honored to be part of this detachment. I'm honored to be in the wing. Like, it's, it's so special for me. Um, then I, I think, and I look up my family. I mean, my mother, my father in, in Texas, like, it's been a long way every single day of, of just encouraging. I really wish they, 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 I really wish they could have been here, because uh, they, they would have. But, you know, it was the best thing to continue in our social distancing. Uh, but th they're joining us online, and, and just, wow, thank you. Uh, my brothers, my sister, uh, and even my, my brother, Samson, um, always, you know, just a couple of years apart, but he was always like that father figure for me. Um, you're watching, you know, I just thank you so much, um, because you joining the Air Force back in 2000 also made me say that for sure I'm joining, because I'm going to follow my brother's footsteps. Um, so thank you. Thank you for being there. Um, thank you for being there for me. Um, my, my, man, there was one faithful call. So when I moved to Colorado, I looked for my church. Like, what church am I going to do? So I called, I, I picked up the phone, I called the pastor, um, and I said, hey, I'm new, I'd like to come to church. Um, my pastor is called back and said, okay, this is the address, this is the time that we're starting. Uh, I never knew that they would end up being my parents. Um, because they are the parents of my beautiful, amazing wife. Um, like, thank you so much for uh, bringing me to your home. Like, you, you've made me feel your son ever since the beginning. Like, there's, there's no distinction. There's no distinction um, of them being my parents um, and, and just all being one family. There's, they've never treated me anything different than a son. Um, so thank you uh, very much for, for doing that for me. And, and the prayers and the long nights, it, it, it helped me get to, um, to where I am. Um, there is a, uh, my, my, my best friend from middle school, uh, Raj, he could not join here, um, but I thank you for also helping, like, Raj is, is just, he, he's a person you're not able to meet, um, but he's just a genius of a guy, younger than I am, and he already has his PhD, he's teaching at NYU, um, so thank you for all the work um, to tweet, tweet his horn, like, he's helped put together algorithms to save lives during the COVID. Um, so that's his tireless effort. Such a young genius guy, Raj. Thank you. Uh, thanks, thanks for um, everything that you've done. Um, and and uh, you know, uh, to to the love of my life. Like wow. I mean, God really gave me the best thing possible uh, when when I saw you. And uh, even so, he's a good God. And, and you know, I, I just I'm just saying thank you real quick. But the first day I saw her, without even knowing her, the Lord put in my spirit to to tell me that that's your wife. Um, and it has been incredible. I mean, every day when you wake up saying, God, I thank you because you have given me something I did not even deserve. You know, I, I don't deserve it, but thank you for being there. Thank you for encouraging me. Uh, I, I'm working late night, sometimes, not, not all the time. It's, it's gonna, it's gonna die now. <laughs> but some of the times, you know, I'm there, like, just thank you. Like, you know, she'll, she'll make sure I'm alive. She'll just sneak in, put food on the table, and then leave. And not even complain. Like, it, it's, it's, you're just such, such a good and incredible inspiration for me. Um, thank you. Thank you for being there. Because um, you're better than I am. Um, and I just, I, I, I thank God for you. Um, now, to uh, everyone else we could not thank, you know, again, I thank you. Uh, Miss Tanya, thank you for being there, like a good inspiration at our church. Like, thank you. You know, it's, it's been great knowing that um, you have great family members, you know, both in, um, in the Air Force and even in church. It's, it, we're all one, and, and thank you all for helping um, to make this a, a reality. Um, and then lastly, to my detachment, uh, a detachment to my squadron. Um, I am honored to be working with you. Um, I'm honored to be your servant leader. Um, you have my commitments that I'm going to do the best I can um, to ensure that we will all succeed together. I'm looking forward to the path ahead. It's going to be a good ride. It's going to be great. Um, so I, I look forward to the good times. Again, everyone, thank you so much. I, I thank you again. Thanks.
At this time, members of Detachment 1, 39th Information Operations Squadron will render their first salute to their new commander, Major Solomon Y. Sonia. The men and women of Detachment 1, 39th Information Operations Squadron, would like to present a gift to Major Sonia's wife, Mrs. Toby Sonia. This gift represents the friendships she will make as she becomes an integral part of our community. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. Refreshments will be served immediately following the ceremony. And in your homes. <laughs> <laughs> what? In keeping with Air Force tradition, please stand as we conclude today's ceremony with the Air Force song. Down we dive, spotting our flames from 